Coming up on Hands On Mac, let's take a look at Apple's own powerful voice and audio recording app. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Welcome back to Hands On Mac. I am Micah Sargent, and today we are taking a look at a built-in app that I find very useful. It's Voice Memos, and it's available on Mac OS, iPad OS, and iOS. It is the built-in tool for recording audio, and you may be surprised at how impressive it is. Uh, in fact, I am a person who, as you might know, does a number of podcasts, and there have been on occasion uh, times when I have invited a person onto the podcast that I do called Clockwise, and that person has uh, is is traveling. And they don't have their microphone with them. And so we want to get good quality audio and they don't really have a solution. The solution in those cases has always been the use of voice memos on the iPhone because the microphone that's built into the iPhone is actually pretty good, particularly if you are in an environment that is quiet and has some level of sound treatment. So a hotel room is often a great place. What you do in that case is you take your iPhone and you place it on a stack of books, uh, maybe on a chair that's set up on a table, somewhere where you can kind of have the microphone at the base of the iPhone near your mouth, and then you don't touch it. As long as you don't touch it, you're good to go. If you if you hold it up to your mouth, that's not great. But if you don't touch it, that can actually be a powerful way of, of recording good quality audio, not great quality audio, but good quality audio. And all they have to do is use the voice memos app. They hit the record button on the voice memos app, and then they are uh, recording great, or again, good quality audio. So let's take a look at the voice memos app. All right, so here is the voice memos app, and you can see a number of voice memos that I have recorded uh, over time. And what we want to do is simply tap the recording button. When we tap the recording button at the bottom, you can see that it starts to record and it shows you sound waves. They're all right there. It automatically names it, in this case, new recording, and this is the 50th new recording. I will stop and I am immediately presented with new recording 50. Now, I have some options here. Uh, there are There's a, a sort of adjustments option on the left. There's the play button, uh, go back 15 seconds, skip forward 15 seconds, the trash icon, which of course will delete it, and you know it, my favorite button, the three dots, the more button. If I tap on that button, I am presented with a lot of options. I can copy this, I can share it, and then I can do things that are available in the share sheet, like running a script, saving it to Dropbox, but I also have options like editing the recording, duplicating the recording, favoriting the recording, or if I want to, I can move it to a folder. If I choose edit recording, this brings up a recording menu, an editing menu for the recording that lets me clip this however I need to. So maybe I want to trim some stuff off the front. Maybe I want to replace it. So I might be doing a voiceover and there's a part that I want to go into. And so at any time I can tap replace and it will start recording from that place and record out new audio from that point on. After I'm done, I just choose done and that will let me complete the recording. Now that of course is the three dots. Let's take a look at the adjustments icon on the left. If I tap on that, I'm given the option to enhance the recording, which is going to uh, kind of make it sound better. Uh, I can't speak to exactly what happens because Apple does a few things, but essentially if it's a voice recording, this is voice memos, it's going to make the uh, frequencies of the voice a little bit better and clearer. It may remove some of the background sound or at the very least change the frequencies, the EQ, uh, so that the background sounds are kind of dropped out. And then there are options like playback speed which of course lets you speed it up and skip silence, which lets you skip over the silences that you might have. So if you have a, a running track of thoughts, let's say you are recording, I want to write a book about a walrus, that space that I just had there, the thought space, the skip silence button will let you remove that essentially as you're listening to the recording. Now, these recordings can be shared. So again, I'll tap the three dots. I'll tap share, and I'm going to choose uh, share to me. And you will see that what pops up is a 
new recording that is an M4A file. It shows the audio recording, it shows the uh, size, which is 566 kilobytes, and that is able to be shared. The person can open it up on their device and it is available as an M4A. Now, if at any time you uh, want to get rid of recordings, you can, of course, hit that trash icon on any individual recording. You can also choose edit in the top right, and then you can select multiple recordings to either delete or share. So if you want to share multiple recordings with other people, you can as well. Now, those of you who are watching will probably notice that there is a button in the top left corner of the screen, an arrow, a back arrow. So you may be curious about that. Let's go ahead and tap on that. What that does is it shows you the folders that you have. So if you are a regular voice memos user, you might want to sort your uh, voice memos into different categories. So you could create a category for book ideas, for big thoughts, for shower thoughts, for thoughts while I'm driving, for whatever it happens to be, for um, uh, undercover agent recordings that I'm doing. Uh, probably don't make a folder for that if you're an undercover agent, but that is an option as well. Now, that is everything that you can do within the recordings app. Uh, Apple also likes to point out that at any time you can tell SIRI record voice memo and the virtual assistant from Apple will help you do that. Let's take a look at the settings though, because that also plays a role in how things go. Um, there's a very important setting that is by default turned on that I have turned off for voice memos. So I've launched the settings app and uh, in the section for the Apple included apps, there is voice memos and you are provided with a few standard options, which are the kind of privacy options, location, uh, whether it has access to the calendar, Siri and search, background app refresh and cellular data. I've talked about those in the past. You are probably familiar with what all of those do, but I will uh, mention the two background app refresh, which of course allows the app to work in the background. So this will likely be that after you finish recording a voice memo, when you swipe away to be able to upload that file to the cloud, if you have cloud sync and then cellular data, uh, which of course lets you sync these files while you're using cellular data. Now, this is important. The voice memos settings. The first setting lets you choose how long it takes for deleted, aka the ones that you've trashed, to actually be deleted, to be cleared away. So if you find yourself accidentally deleting things, uh, you may want to set this to a higher value, maybe even never, because you can always go in and clear the deleted files yourself. Or if you are pretty confident that you'll never delete, you can choose immediately, which means that when you delete, it is gone, gone. Now on this screen also are uh, two other settings, audio quality. And this is important because if you choose compressed, this is where you wouldn't want to use this for a podcast or something like that. Uh, a compressed audio file is going to be much smaller, but it also isn't going to have that richness. It's not going to, uh, if you work with an editor who, you know, does your podcast or if you yourself know what you're doing and like to play around with the audio files and make them sound good, a lossless version of the file is going to be much better because it's going to capture more. It's going to have more and uh, more there available to work with. So just be mindful of that when you're deciding whether you need compressed files. These are probably audio files that you're never going to do anything outside of just have them. So if it's just about collecting notes, if you're not planning on sharing these with other people in you know a professional or semi-professional manner, compressed is probably fine. But if you plan to do something with these audio files and have them actually be used in other media or something like that, a lossless option is much better. You'll notice, you'll remember that when I shared it, it was an M4A file. It is a lossless uh, M4A. And then last but not least is location-based naming. You'll notice I have that turned off. Uh, Apple introduced this feature and I immediately went in and turned it off. What this does is it pays attention to your location. And when you hit record on a voice memo, it tags that that voice memo with the location uh, where you are. So I guess a lot of people must use uh, the their current location as some means of of uh, informing how they're going to name their files. I do not. I want to name them according to the subject of the file. So for me, location based naming. No, 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 not not for me. Uh, if you want that, though, you can have that turned on. And then, of course, in your settings, you will open 
um, you will see that in the voice memos app, it will pop up with locations for the files. Now, importantly, with all of this, um, you want to make sure that it is uh, set up exactly how you want it, because if you have a Mac, if you have an iPad, you can actually sync all of your voice memos to all of those devices. So I have voice memos on the Mac. I can pull it up there as well and work with these files. I can record voice memos using this microphone and those will pop up on my iPhone as well. Very handy to have those voice memo memos across the whole platform. So folks, that is voice memos. Uh, it is a, again, a really handy, really easy to use, but I feel um, powerful because of that lossless option and because of the quality of the iPhone microphone uh, app that Apple provides. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Hands on Mac. I appreciate it. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, thank you for listening. If you are not a Club Twit subscriber, consider joining the club because you will also get to see video of this very episode. Twit.tv slash club twit is just $7 a month. We thank you so much for your support, for your time. And I'll be back again next week with another episode of Hands on Mac. Bye-bye. <laughs>